dark, dark tune, there was a dark, dark street, and in the dark, dark street, there was a dark, dark office. In the dark, dark office, there were some dark, dark stairs, and down the dark, dark stairs, there was a dark, dark room, and in the dark, dark room was where the worst wrestling tropes go to die. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic Wrestling and welcome to the latest instalment of Straight to Hell, the show, of course, where my illustrious guest offers up lists of their pet peeves from the world of professional wrestling and then they all get sent down straight to hell to rot for the rest of eternity. You know who is joining us today. He's world famous. He's gone global several times over through his work on the Denk Ops YouTube channel and various other places as well. It's Mr. Chris Denker, a fantastic episode today, if I do toot my own horn myself, a wide range of topics covered, ranging from the ridiculous to the deadly serious, and that's how we like it here on Straight to Hell. So without any further ado, over to Chris and Ross. So we're joined by Chris Denker, this is the first time, this is the first take we've done, definitely first the one. first take. Nail it every time I do. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate Thank you for coming on. That's what I was supposed to say the first time around. This is crazy. Um, so we need to address the elephant in the room. Uh, sure. a, couple, a couple of short weeks ago on your mm. illustrious YouTube channel, you uploaded mm. a reactions video to one of our world famous lists. And uh, mm. I believe at the start of the video, you addressed uh, the sort of the warning that Adam Pachitti sent your way. Mm. If you did what you did, which you did do, mm. by the way, I did. Um, he would sue. Try him mm. and I'll sue, I think the quote was. So the mm. video goes live just to take you into my bedroom. One fine night, 2 a.m. it was, the phone starts ringing. And I pick up the phone. I've never heard Adam irate, but he was fuming. And he just shouted, Ross, he's done it now. He's <laughs> gone and made a big mistake. <laughs> so here we are a few short weeks later. So I need to mm. ask, first of all, how you're doing in the midst of what's going on against Adam Pacitti behind the scenes. And what's it like taking on Adam Pacitti in the, law, in the, in the courtroom? Sure. You know, uh, me and Adam, not a lot of people know this. We go, uh, we go a long way back. Um, we've known each other probably like pro closer, closer to a decade, honestly. Um, and you know, our friendship over time was good, but then we started getting the situation where it's like, oh, he's got a YouTube channel that he's running and I got a YouTube channel that I was running. And like, I had to protect my best interests. So I didn't talk to him anymore. I was like, Hey, go away. I don't want to see you anymore. He was a little upset about that, but life goes on. All of a sudden cultaholic comes around, right? Cultaholics is this big, crazy thing. Everybody's like, oh, but huge and biggest. You oh, no, don't, don't, don't make the face, don't make the face, don't make the face. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, guess guess who I start hearing? Oh, you know, Adam's been talking about you. You know, Adam's been saying stuff about you. You know, Adam's been saying stuff about you. So I hit him up. I said, listen, man, let's let bygones be bygones. This video popped up on my timeline. I'm going to react to it if that's cool with you. Um, and that's that. And he answered back and I quote, try it and I'll sue. I think there were other expletives in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just the part that I remember. So since that day, Adam and I have been going back and forth in some litigation of which I cannot get into too much detail right now. Uh, let's just say that he might work for me soon. That's all. That's, 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 that's look, things happen the way they happen. I'm just saying. That's great news for me, Chris. I'm not going to lie to you because as a shareholder here, that means I'm going straight to the top. <laughs> like Cameron Grimes, I'm going straight to the moon here at Cultaholic. <laughs> Wait, did I make a mistake? <laughs> Cultaholic's about to get a lot, a lot worse with me mm. at the helm instead of Adam. <laughs> um, so with that elephant out the room, uh, in uh -huh. the room, out the way, sorry. Uh, are, mm. you missing, are you missing 2K21? The whole that is, you know, this time of year, 2K, the 2K games come out. Are you missing the 2K21 this year? No, I'm not. Um, I'm not. So, for if anyone watches this doesn't know, like I, I over the years have uploaded a lot of, you know, WWE gaming content, mm -hmm. um, for better or worse. And I, from a personal standpoint, had already been at the point where I was like, okay, this is getting worse and worse. Like this is just not that fun anymore. Um, and then like 2K20 comes out and it just breaks <laughs> and it was like i i feel like i needed i needed a point to just be like chris you got you got to stop this like you gotta you gotta you gotta pivot you gotta do something else like i can't just like i said from a personal standpoint like i can't 
I don't support this. <laughs> you're like, I, I don't, I don't support what you're putting out. So to like continue to keep putting my name next to it and stuff like that, I was like, that, that, that now I also look like a piece of shit because uh, all sorts of stuff. So long story short, no, I'm not very excited <laughs> about, <laughs> about any future uh, 2K games. I, it pains me to say that because you're talking to somebody that grew up on wrestling games, like all the way, like back N64, all the way up through what it is today. And those got me through like my childhood. So to see where it is now is just like, it's just disheartening. And I hope it gets better. Like, I don't want it to die. I don't want it to whatever, but um, I don't need to be as involved in it as I used to be, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I put out a tweet when it was announced that there was going to be no 2K21. I was like, good mm. news, everyone. There's going to be no 2K21. And yeah. I, had, I had everyone calling me an arsehole, Chris, because no. I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking about the people putting this game together. And of course, I, looking back, maybe I should have not taken such like a gamer standpoint, maybe looked at it as sure. a whole, people being out of work and whatever. Right. But well, from, a, from a, pu a purely gamer's perspective, it was bloody absolutely. terrible. <laughs> from, from what I understand... Um, it's it's not like cancel it, cancel the series, everybody's fired, blah blah blah. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's it's more of a situation of like they understand what happened with 2K20, so they're like, okay, let's take a step back, let's not put out 2K21, let's not put out a yearly thing, and let's like push for a 2K22, maybe that's like really good and actually worked on and has new features and all that. So like, I'm hoping that that's what the situation is, but I'm not getting my hopes up. If that makes sense. <laughs> and battlegrounds, where do you stand on there? Are you on the battlegrounds or are you off the battlegrounds? I I was so I was really excited about it because I like the arcadey stuff. Like yeah. I like the all WWE All Stars and throwing people off cages and setting sh on fire and everything. Like that's that's the wrestling stuff that I like. So at first I was very excited about it, and then I played it, and I don't want to sit here and tell you that like it's it's hot garbage or that it's bad. Like it's it's enjoyable with some friends and stuff. Um, it's got some decent online features, like better than most of the the 2K games had features. Um, it's just kind of, there's just not a lot to it. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of depth to it. You can't really get a lot out of it. Uh, so because of that, I, I'm like, I'm pretty much done with it already. Like I played with it for a couple of weeks. I streamed it put videos up and now I'm like, okay, like what's what's next? This type of thing. Uh, but it didn't it didn't stick as much as I was hoping it would. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the, the general sort of reaction's been worldwide, because us here at Coldaholic, mm. I don't think any of us have played it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, de it's definitely not one of their not one of their top tier releases, that's for sure. That's for sure. Um, I think a lot of people were like on the 2K wagon at that point. They just want to see that series get better. And they're like, oh, why are you putting your focus into this when you could just be making this better? And it's like, I feel like we live in a, in a world where you kind of should be able to get the best of both like people who do like the simulation wrestling stuff okay play that and if you don't like that here's this over the top arcadey sh that might be more up your aisle so so that's that's a future for wrestling games that i hope we strike a balance on <laughs> in the near future and i've got to mention just because it, it's the, the the channel got announced i think um i think it might be live by the time this video goes goes out uh the aew games youtube channel where yeah. where do you know anything got an inside scoop maybe because i know nothing i know the channels are coming but that's it um I do. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm allowed to say. Uh, there will be people think. Uh, I I guess people think it's going to be for one specific thing mm -hmm. that they've teased before, mm -hmm. and it's going to be for a multitude of things. Bloody hell! Is all. I mean, we might know that by the time this video comes yeah, out. Yeah, probably. probably. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and just... then they cut all of it out, and then I just look like an idiot. And it's just one thing. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it though, because obviously I think Kenny Omega is heavily involved in the sort of uh, yeah, production yeah. aspect of it. And he, he they have they account. have the roster to pull, I, in my opinion, to pull off something similar to what you know Up Up Down Down is doing. Also, yeah. uh, so I think that that could be really cool for just wrestling fans and gaming fans in general. It's gonna be really sick. Yeah, it's just come back in my mind that you were involved with Up Up Down Down back in the day. Do you know all, all the challenges? Yeah, a couple things I did a little bit here and there. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching those when I was back at my old job. Yeah, yeah, they, they uh, much like you guys, it's kind of like when I started uh, getting into the wrestling stuff, like I, I would hear about you guys and then Austin reached out to me. He's like, I'm trying to I'm trying to build this whole YouTube thing. 
do you know anybody who's like doing wrestling stuff? And I was like, oh yeah, there's these guys and there's these guys. And I'm like trying to introduce him to like all my friends and everything. And the conversations that, that he and I have always had is just like, we, if we all come up, we all come up, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like wrestling is such, uh, such like a, a specific little, little niche. And when everybody's on the same page about something, and is able to come together and like support each other. Like we can do some pretty crazy shit. Like the thing, the views that you guys get, the views that Austin gets, sometimes the views that I get every now and then on a, on a good day. Um, it's it's crazy to, to think of that like, there's that many wrestling fans who want to see these content creators put out this like, this content with each other and then against each other. Like, I feel like there's probably gonna be a whole big maybe not so much on up up down down's end but like an aew channel versus up up down down kind of thing that would be so like how cool would that be for the yeah. for the fans to see like them playing against each other or something not that that's anything that's going to happen right off the bat i wouldn't think um and that's actually something that's actually one of the things we we're gonna talk about a little later um <laughs> but no i think i think it's gonna be really good for for everybody involved honestly yeah. and uh just before we get going with the straight to hell portion of the show mm -hmm. i need to mention odyssey um, I've approached Blazing Squad. Oh, so you need to mention what? Odyssey back in the Odyssey. Okay. Right? <laughs> okay, you do have that right. <laughs> She's a local celebrity. All that malarkey. Yeah, no, I've I've been down the what? down the rabbit you hole. Been, so you've been digging. Yeah, of course <laughs> I've been house? digging. I've just I need to ask you the question. Um, oh, obviously, um, we know in professional wrestling when you put the new in front of something, it's mm. always a massive success. No matter what it is, you think of certain tag teams from the Attitude yeah. Era, you put new in the front of that, it's always a success. So how does the new Odyssey sound? With myself, maybe Adam, once you get that litigation sorted, maybe Matthew of Botchamania. Let's get it, let's get the band started with a, with a new name. <laughs> See, now, now we're talking because I didn't think about it like that. I didn't think about it like that. So now, okay, so you have to bring that back. Also, I can't believe you actually went far that far back. That's so funny. You are, you are a, and what do they call it? Uh, uh, do An they arsehole. call journalist? No, no. <laughs> a, uh, if, uh, Investigative, investigative, investigative. Yes, my investigative mind hasn't journalist. broken up today. <laughs> investigative journalist, thank you. Thank I thought you. it was amazing that you've been on a, sort of like American Talent with it all and all that stuff. And I saw the, I don't know what chat show it was, but you were on some sort of chat show. And one of the dance moves you did, where the three of you got down and the one of you walked over the, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Oh, it was yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, techers yeah, yeah, on yeah. show that, there. <laughs> that was, um, oh man, that stuff like really brings back some some crazy memories. Like that's, it, it's funny too because. After after all that music group stuff, um, I was I was at a point in my life where I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna start doing some like solo music. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, let me start working on that. And then this YouTube sh was like becoming more and more popular. And I'm like watching people's Call of Duty videos and stuff. And I'm like, that's kind of cool. But <laughs> and it's not like at first I'm like trying to bounce to, and then obviously YouTube, you know. Uh, thankfully was able to grow the way that it was and I was able to make something out of that. Um, but it could have really went either way, to be honest with you. It really <laughs> could have. Yeah. It could have went yeah. south very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, just that dance move in particular. You could have made, you know, the, remember the old uh, "Don't try this at home" adverts for wrestling. Oh yeah, yeah. You could yeah. have made one well, of those with that dance. So move. he, well, he was the lightest person in the group. So <laughs> yeah. we had a discussion about that. We're like, okay, who like weighs the least here? And it, and it was him by like a couple a couple pounds because I also didn't weigh a whole lot back then either. <laughs> Yeah, just in case people have no idea what I'm talking about, there's some sort. It's on YouTube. If you just type in Odyssey and the local celebrity, whatever the song was no, called you back don't in have the to day. Do that. <laughs> no, no, no. I think they took it. I think it's banned. I think they took it down. Actually. Oh really? Like a, yeah. It might have been, it might the, been yesterday. It's the algorithm. You know, YouTube algorithm changing all the time. It's like it's crazy. You know. Yeah, goes mental over two days since I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, we are here to speak about things that Chris wants to send straight to hell. Any sort really? of wrestler. He's actually come prepared with notes. He's told I me did. before he came on the air, which is a rarity. I don't, do this for, I don't do this for anything or anyone, but I was like, <laughs> if I'm coming on this shit, I need to be prepared. Because I, I, I watched like some previous like clips and shows and stuff, and I was like, oh, man, these people are like, their life is wrestling, and they like live and breathe it. And I've just been so disassociated with it for like this past year that i'm like okay well i need to i need to like be prepared and like actually know what i'm saying so so i prepared a couple a couple things so what, what is my your, five things and some notes about them basically. what is what is your sort of cons consumption of wrestling these days are you watching my consumption is is highlights via the internet mm -hmm. um maybe i'll watch a pay-per-view if i have like nothing else going on yeah um but as far as watching full weekly shows that hasn't happened in god 
not once in 2020. I know that. I'll tell you not what, once. if you're going to pick one of them, SmackDown at the minute is on yeah. a roll. I don't know yeah. what it is. I don't know what's happened behind the scenes, but the last three or four weeks is uh, we're sat here. On the day the, the election happened, I'll, I'll, I'll peel back the curtain because I think we're, mm. we're going to sit on this one for a while. Um, the last few weeks of SmackDown has been amazing. So I'd fully, if you do have the time, I'd fully recommend to watch SmackDown. More really? I have seen, so, I've seen, I think it's SmackDown, right? The clips of Roman and, and Jay going out. That yeah. is really cool. I did watch some highlights of that and this whole new like Roman character. I'm like, yeah, like, yes. Like, why couldn't you do this when I was watching and I cared about it? But like, it's very, it's very cool what they're doing with uh, with Roman. So I will definitely give them that for sure. It's mad to think because sort of like, you know, four or five years ago, everyone was saying, turn the guy heel. He's yeah. just not working as a baby face. Mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if it would have been as much a success as it has been if they didn't hold off for so long. Yeah. Is that a thing? You know, right? It's like, you never really know because of the way, the way the fans sometimes can be. It's like, then as soon as it happens, you're like, you should have done it sooner. I don't want this anymore. Or then like you do it too soon. It's like, no, you got to let them do this. It's just like things happen the way that they happen. And I think the more uh, the more we sit back and just kind of let them happen, the easier it is to be a fan of this, mm -hmm. um, which is probably one of the reasons why it's harder for me to be a fan of this recently. <laughs> I miss being a fan. I haven't analyzed everything mm. in this job. That's the only bad yeah. downside about this job is having to analyze everything. I, I will 100% agree with that and say that especially during the time where I was doing like three wrestling videos, like a day, every single day, day in and day out. I was like, it, it, it burned me out on wrestling. I was like, wow, it's like wrestling went from something that like I've always enjoyed to now feeling kind of like a job. Yeah. Um, and when that started to happen, I was like, okay, I need to like pull back a little bit because I don't want to start to hate wrestling. Mm -hmm. And if I'm being hundred percent honest, like we're almost at that point legitimately. Um, and it's it's a hard thing to let go of. It's a hard thing to let. And I don't the thing is, I don't want to let go of it. Like it, it's you start watching it. Mike, you start watching it when you're five, and then you get a little older. Maybe you get out of it for a little bit because like you're in high school, you're trying to be cool with your friends, and then like you get back into it. Like you never you never just leave it, no. right? So I, I'm just hoping to get to a point where where I enjoy what I'm seeing and talking about it makes me enjoy what I'm saying instead of feeling like I'm talking about it because I have to. You know what I mean? And That's kind of where I've been at. <laughs> has it just been the storylines that's just sort of like um, unmotivated? Un it's, like, un it, it's, yeah. it's a little it's a little bit of, I mean, of course, of course, some of the storylines are just garbage. Um, and you like, they have some of the best, probably the best wrestlers in the entire world. And it's like, I have so many reasons probably to watch it. But like I said, the, the, kind of that building and building of always having to do it day in and day out over and over. It just, it made me kind of resent it as a whole, not even from like a specific, a specific product standpoint, just right. from like, oh, yeah, I gotta do this again type of thing. So it's like, I've, I've been trying to find that balance and I'm still not really there yet. Uh, and I wish there was like a specific reason. <laughs> I wish there was a specific reason for it, but it's just kind of a, like a culmination of everything. Yeah, I, yeah. I know where you're coming from there, definitely. But let's crack <laughs> on and let's hear your first offering to send oh, straight down to hell to rock. We go, we doing it. We're doing it. Okay. We're going for it. Go on. Okay. Um, I want to start off. This is more like a. This is a pet peeve, but it takes me completely out of it. it takes me completely out of it. I'm like, there's heavier things we could have started off with, but I'm gonna start off with something just kind of like a pet peeve. Looking at the ref when he is counting. <laughs> you, I have watched people completely miss their spots, talk to each other, say what's about to happen next, make it so obvious about what's going on, and I'll sit there and be like, meh, it's wrestling. As soon as somebody goes to the ground talking about some, like, I'm out of it. I'm like, nope, nope, turn off, next, <laughs> the next, match. like, I, it's this, I know it's irrational, it's probably, it's like a pet peeve. It is. It takes me completely out of it to the extent that nothing else in wrestling does. Not the camera shakes. Not like not them screaming the same five things on commentary over and over. Like it. If you look at the referee, I hate it. I hate it. I and hate one, it. Once you've seen it once, you're always looking. You, for now it you with, look for it. Now I'm looking for it every time. So move the camera. Put the camera in a different angle. Does does so? Here's a question. This probably might sound stupid. Does the ref not know the finishes like 90% of the time? 
I imagine they do. I imagine I, I reckon there's a couple of absolute mad bastards who don't want to know and just go at it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I reckon like, the fine laws they do, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. It just feels like the the agreement should be, hey, it's not a three count until X Y Z happens. So like, you don't need to be looking at me. I'm sorry. I know it's a, I know it's a, like a small thing. It's a little no, irrational, if, if, but. If, that's what this show's about. It's uh, just vent all you want. Thank I mean, God, I, oh, man, I know I exactly where you're coming. It doesn't bother me quite to the extent I don't. I think it bothers you. But uh, <laughs> once once you see it, you, you especially with a particular wrestler, maybe you've seen him do it more than once. Mm -hmm, you're always mm -hmm. looking for it every single time there's a pinfall. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but back to that referee thing. I think they're, they're always told, like, if you can't count to three, you've got to count to three. Otherwise, yeah. you know, hell breaks. That's, that's what I've heard, too. It's like, if your hand is on the way down, you, like you have to, if if their shoulders are down, you have to finish the type of thing, and it's like, I I get it, but that could accomplish the opposite of what you're trying to accomplish with this whole thing that you just did. So yeah. like, why not tighten it up so that that the the because the how what's the frequency of that happening? How many finishes? I know it's not like a super crazy amount, but it's you see it happen on a on, on a basis. On a moderately consistent basis, every now and then, it's like, oh, you fucked, you fucked up, or something, or something like that's happening. Uh, and I just feel like you could tighten up those those match endings with with a little more synchronization and communication. Yeah. If that's you a big word. Um, you know what needed to do? <laughs> Kurt Angle. They need to hire Kurt Angle in the performance <laughs> center because that man. I've never seen a guy kick out like Kurt Angle does. It's mm. two, never mind two and three quarters. It's two and yeah. an even smaller fraction. Yeah, 99, <laughs> no 100. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, Kurt, that's, yeah. And that's the stuff I love. That's, you know, but at this, day, at this day and age too, you know that you're going to kick out of that clothesline he just hit you with. Mm. You're going to kick out of, you know, you're going to kick out of the, the second rope elbow drop that someone just hit on you. Um, so I don't know. So I know, like I said, I know it's small, but I but I wanted to start off with like something. Like I would feel better if I got it off my chest, and I feel so much better now. Like well, it's out there now, and I guess it, it, this is one aimed for WWE as well because they love a camera cut. We all know that, and they all they've got a million cameras around the ring, so there's no excuse to get a full on facial shot. <laughs> facial shot? What am I talking about? Here? A full on shot <laughs> of someone's hey, wait, face. Wait, wait. Where you, you can clearly see their eyes looking at the referee. I'll move on quickly because that was going somewhere <laughs> south indeed. So there oh. we have it. Looking at the referee when you're getting pinned and then kicking out that is gone straight to hell what's your next bye. offering please chris bye next offering um i'm sure this has been touched on quite a bit uh but it's it, it's like it applies to everything but obviously it applies to to wrestling and that's of course the the gatekeeping i'm sure this has probably been brought up on the on the show before i don't imagine it's a new idea that no one ever thought of um i don't want to hurt anybody's feelings but wrestling is like is not that popular i the more people <laughs> we can get in and get on our side about it the better um so the whole you're a casual you're a mark how can you like this style of wrestling how can you like this style of wrestling that we gotta stop that we gotta quit that ASAP. A, uh, this this company sucks. AEW, WWE, like just just f it. Just watch wrestling. Just watch it. And if your friends are like, "Hey, what the hell is this?" Explain to them the stupidness that you're watching and get them to understand the irony of why everything that you're seeing could and should be great. You like flips? Sick. Let's watch some flips. You like twenty minute rest hold matches? Like that's cool too. But to to try to put everybody in these in these little pockets, casual fan, Mark, Smark, Super Mark, this like it's just it does. Who, what, who does that help? Who does that help? I I want like to speak about wrestling and not have the first comment. Of, People don't watch wrestling. Like <laughs> like okay, well like, I get it. Like it's not it's not at that level of popularity that it once was, and it's not going to be if the fan base continues to kind of operate as it does. So I, I would love to see more more unity and exception in the wrestling world. We need to have a section on every single sort of nightly news show in every single country around the world where it just maybe flashes up with a graphic that just says, wrestling fans know that wrestling isn't real. <laughs>
wrestling fans breaking are aware news. it's a performance. Yeah, break that news breaking every news. day. Because that is because I there's there's talk sport in the UK that I follow on Facebook and they publish wrestling articles. Mm-hmm. And it's all these Brexiteers that are sort of in their fifties and they're all going, Don't these people know that wrestling's know, fake? How can they like That's wrestling? Real. And yeah, it's all that stuff. But then it's the worst. I, yeah, this is such a broad one because the the sort of tribalism of like AEW versus WWE. Mm. And we started off this show today by I, I baked up SmackDown to you because SmackDown's been absolutely mm. fantastic. But mm. if someone who has never seen me before saw me saying that, they'd be saying, Oh, you're such a SmackDown and WWE shill boss. Yeah. How dare you? You can't mm. like AEW now because you're so on board with SmackDown. Mm. And uh, Chris Van Vliet spoke about this recently, and it's just, it is a big issue that needs to just bugger off. <laughs> yeah. It's it, it, like, accept what other people like. And just because you see someone publicly say that they like something doesn't mean that they automatically dislike the other thing or the thing that's next to it or near it. So I, let's let's stop making so many assumptions. Let's stop assuming that we know, you know, what what everyone is thinking and what everybody likes. And let's just like enjoy the shit that we have while while we have it, you know? Why do you think it happens? I saw someone reply in the, in the comments to the Chris Van Vliet video saying that's sports, Ross. People like their sports team and you can't like anything else. And I was thinking, wrestling's not sports, it's entertainment. Right. <laughs> it's no, not no, no, you're absolutely right. And it's, I think it's going to stem back too because late 90s, everything was about competition. Yeah. They, they implemented, WWE implemented in our heads as fans, anybody else that's around is an enemy. Anybody else that exists in the wrestling world, Vince said anybody that exists in the wrestling world outside of me is an enemy. So now as a fan base, we say, oh, okay. So we can't we can't like them because they're different. Even th- they might have a better roster, their wrestling might be better, their shows might be better, but we can't like them because our allegiance lies here. And like, as an avid sports fan, like I, I get it from that from that perspective. Like if anybody talks shit about the Eagles, like we like uh, start getting a little aggressive. But like, but it's not it's not the same to that extent when the the division the division was created because like I said everyone that's not this is now the enemy. Yeah. So if we stop acting like everybody's the enemy and just say hey these are alternatives, it's like I don't necessarily even think of it as as different teams. It's like it's like the NBA, and then if there was another professional basketball like league in america that was also that also had great you know great uh, games and great rosters and everything um there's no reason why they can't coexist together yeah. so it's just a point of can we get there or not as a unit yeah if you will so what was your consumption like when you were growing up were you team were you full-on team WWE or were you wc oh or yeah you oh, i between? was i was team WWE all the way they they did it. They did it to me. They I, they brainwashed me. Oh, WWE! Oh, Hulk Hogan left. Oh, you left. Oh, everybody left. Like it was the worst. I uh, know I couldn't take it. And it wasn't until I wasn't until I got a little bit older and started to realize like, wait, what did he do? <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, what happened? They went out of business. Why? And like all the things you start to learn these things. You're like, oh, sh- I probably should have pulled for them for you know for an extended period of time. Um, but no, I was I was full WWF Mark. Um, Stone Cold was my, was my, you know, surrogate father. Uh, like I said, <laughs> like, I thought he was the coolest friggin' dude that ever existed. Um, and, and no one could tell me anything about WCW. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it at all. Now I love it. Like I'll watch old WCW on the network anytime, anytime. So how far does this say uh, the gatekeeping point go? Does it go as far as people who, you know, we all, we all know these people who have, have seen a wrestler before they got made it to the big time. And now they've made it to the big time. They're mm. maybe not as good as they were back in the day mm. on a smaller scale. Is it, are, mm. we, are we going as far as that? Well, well, here's a tough thing because unfortunately people that say that might have a point because when you do get to a certain point, you do get called up, say, let's say the WWE, you start getting in that system because it's, it's no longer, it's no longer the independent circuit. It's now, it's now a system. Mm-hmm. So you are funneled through this system. And sometimes when people get funneled through that, they lose not, it's not even their fault. They lose parts of what made them cool along the way. So I get why people would say, Hey, that's not as cool. You aren't as good as you want. It's a shitty thing to say, Hey, you aren't as good as you once were. Um, but I think, I think acknowledging that it happens isn't necessarily a problem um because i've i can absolutely see circumstances where that's exactly the case that's exactly what happened you know you haven't seen keith lee recently have you um 
he got moved from NXT to the main roster and it all. Yeah, and yeah. then his music changed. Yeah, and his look and changed. And everybody hated it. Yeah, he got Did new he get attire. Music yet? Uh, no, yeah. Apparently, he's recorded his own. Is it? That's, oh, a, that's, that's, that's in the news, but it hasn't been released yet, so we don't know what it sounds like. Um, okay. He got he got new attire because presumably Vince McMahon thinks he's too fat. Because that's we all know what that Vince McMahon's like. But um, yeah, that's just a, an example of I guess what you're talking about there, where they've lost a certain something in, in, just by going up the system. And, yeah, uh, and it's it's role. it's by no is it it's not Keith Lee's fault. Like I I would actually I've I've like seen people tweet him be like, where the hell's your music at? It's like. You really think he went to the offense and said, listen, this music that I've been using, mm, I'm not feeling it anymore. Let's get rid of yeah. it. It's not, it's not like, no, that that's not, it's not their fault. Once you understand how the system works, I think it's easier to stop being so mad at the talent and, and direct your anger where it kind of should be. You know yeah, I mean? think that was more down to WWE changing music producers and then having to move yeah. over to a new producer and sure. get rid of the old producer's themes. Uh, so that's like a preparation on WWE's part, I guess. But there we have it. Game right, or just thing. pay for the themes that are... Yep, they could do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but gatekeeping on so many different levels. Any more levels that we need to touch on before we move on, Chris, do you reckon? For the gatekeeping? No, it's, yeah. it's, it, it's a pretty all-encompassing thing, I think, you know. People understand what 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 we say when we say gatekeeping in wrestling, so let's just let's knock it off. <laughs> there we have it. So there's two down, three <laughs> to go. Damn. It's gone. Oh, you still don't like Chris Van Vliet as well. Sorry to bring him up again. Yeah. Hell, he brought out like Vince McMahon. That's the first oh, time anyone's ever done it. And uh, I don't oh, know why wow. it's taken so long, yeah. <laughs> oh wow, isn't he so great and handsome <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. guy named Chris? Wonderful for him. <laughs> <laughs> You're a handsome man as well. Hey. I'm not Chris Van Vliet handsome though. That's a different level of handsome. I'll leave that up to the viewers, not my decision. <laughs> um, but third third pick, please. All right, number three. Um a little bit a little bit lighter, not as deep as the last one, but still something that that I just hate. Three plus hour shows that are not pay-per-views. Oh yeah. Movies take eight months to make, and they're not three hours, usually. You know, like to, to think that you can consistently pop out, was it three hours Raw, two hours NXT, three hours SmackDown, but this other random sh 205 pre-show, post-show, then a pre-show pay-per-view, then a post-show on the pay-per-view, and then the pay-per-view itself. That's like, that's a 20 plus hour content week. Yeah. Like, there's no possible way that you can churn out that much content at that rate and it's gonna be that good mm -hmm. it's literally just that's that's just like what i learned from when i started youtube content creation 101 it's like quality over quantity and if the quantity needs to be there then the quantity needs to have a, a certain amount of quality that you know carries it through and it does not mm -hmm. so and I get like all oh, the rosters are so huge and everybody wants time to shine. And like, yes, that's that's great. So you can compact these 30 minute intros and the 20 minute backstage segments and the this and the that. And 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 I get it. Like it's about money. They make their their revenue from the from the TV money. Yeah. And like I completely understand that. I know people are gonna say, oh, well, they don't have a choice or whatever. It's like, no, they don't have a choice. It's it's not that they don't have a choice, it's that they chose the monetary benefit of putting out this much content as quickly as they do, which is fine, but I'm not gonna watch it because it's too much. Um, so if if there's a situation where, like I watched WrestleMania for two nights. Um, Thank God that was two nights, by the way, because the last few years has been an absolute joke. <laughs> and and, and even, even, the, even the one that like each night it's to kind of started to drag a little bit by the fourth hour, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's just too much, and maybe like, look, maybe maybe I'm just getting older, and I just that's just like I don't want to spend so much time in front of and like watching that type of shit all the time. But it's it's too much. It's too much. It is it's too, too much. much. It's striking it's that much. balance between sort of the fan experience and the business side of things mm -hmm. because. Obviously, having three hours of TV and the adverts that are on the TV during those three hours, that's obviously going to make you more money. That's just how it works, isn't it? In TV. Of course. But how much money are they going to lose if they just get rid of that third hour? And then, obviously, just employ maybe less wrestlers. They employ too yeah. many wrestlers to begin with. They have way too have. many wrestlers. So they it's have. a sliding scale, isn't it? Less TV, less employee. Well, not employee. Less wrestlers hired, not employees. That's the wrong terminology. Independent yeah. contractors and all that malarkey. Um so yeah, it's a it's a weird it's a weird thing, isn't it? There's just too much of everything. It's 
overexposure, I think, has always been a big problem with wrestling. And it ha- and you see it happen a lot when maybe something hits that like wasn't really expected to hit. So they do it over and over and over and over. And now it's not cool anymore. Or that one sketch that was funny. So now they repeat it over and over and over and over. It's like it, they won't just allow the cool moments to happen. And we just all like it all organically flows together. It's like when a, when a moment happens, now we have to now we have to monetize it and replicate it and post it here and put it here and put it there. and like it's it's a it's an unfortunate uh, almost necessity of like the world that we live in. But at the same time, it's it's at a point where it's it's pushing longtime viewers away from wanting to watch those weekly shows because it's just too long. It's just it's a lot too much. It's, it's yeah. pushing people to it because obviously a lot is made about the ratings and whatnot. And I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm no expert on TV. I don't know how they work. Me but the, the the sort of setup for Raw and SmackDown these days, it does it does push you to just watch the YouTube highlights. Yeah. Who, who has? I know, I know if you're a kid, I guess you do after school. Oh, you yeah. Go home, you have your tea yeah. stuff. But once, once you hit a certain age, who really does have the time to invest in WWE to watch like five hours at least of main roster TV every week? Exactly. I think, sure, when I was eight, nine, ten. God, I would have loved to come home from school and know that there's wrestling on, like three nights of the week that I come home from school is going to be wrestling on that night. That's fucking awesome. Like, that's yeah. amazing. Uh, but like now it's kind of like, yeah, that's 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 a lot. So and I know WWE has to has to strike a balance between uh, not catering, but like, you know, giving that demographic what they want, but also trying to keep their older demographic. And it's like it's 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 a struggle that I, I don't see. I don't see how they're going to be able to like get to that point where everybody wants to watch again, yeah. which is unfortunate. Cause like I said before, like I want, I want people to like wrestling. I want everybody to like enjoy it. Cause when it's great, it's fucking great. Hmm. When wrestling is good, it is really, really good. But when it sucks, it sucks ass. So yeah. just find a balance, please. <laughs> Isn't it <laughs> mad to think God. that I think over fifties is still the most popular demographic to watch Raw is every it? week. I'm sure I read that from the likes of Brian Alvarez, who put way too much stake in these bloody demographics every single... <laughs> yeah, oh, it's a, it's N- very... NXT lost on the 18 to 49 demographic. Oh, who gives a toss, man? It doesn't. It, <laughs> none of that matters at all. It really doesn't. It's like all all one company needs to do is, is focus more on putting their highlights on like TikTok or something. And all you need is a couple, couple of those videos to, to really pop. And now all of a sudden you got a whole whole new like 10 to, to 17 demographic that is interested in the shit that you're doing now that they weren't before. So like all it's all going to take is for one of these companies to realize the time that we live in and catch up to what's going on. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So this extends not just to the weekly shows, but to pay-per-views as well. The sigh of relief that comes, that just leaves my body when you say, oh, it was a two and a half hour show. Oh, <laughs> my oh God. My God. <laughs> I, I can, can do, look, I can actually do things now. Yeah, I can do something else in my day rather than just watch WrestleMania for nine hours, wherever it is yeah. from the start of the kickoff show until the end of the main event. But yeah, I fully agree with you. Uh, less the better, I think, at this, at this point. So there we have it. The length the length is quality, going straight Quality ahead. over quantity, yes. Yeah. I, I so what's your, what's your fourth offering, please, Chris? Um... I was gonna save this one for last, but then I maybe shouldn't end it on such a rough note. Um, <laughs> so, and I do have to be a little careful what I say here. Um, Vince's chokehold on people's basic human rights. I will send straight to hell. Um, this is obviously a little, it's more relevant now than it has been in previous years because of um, the way that they're trying to take control of you know, the superstar's ability to do things outside of the company. Yeah. Um, if I'm an employee somewhere, if I'm employed, I'm an employee at a place and I finish working and I go home, whatever I do when I'm at home does not have shit to do with that place, period, the end. Yeah. As an independent contractor, when you are done with your day, to the thousandth extent that you would be if you were an em- an employee. You don't need to worry about the job that you just came from after that. But we need to stop calling them independent contractors because legally that's not what they are. The contracts are worded in a way that make all of this extra sh- okay. He can get away with it. Mm-hmm. Period. We can all complain 
as as a as a fan base, the superstars can complain. Blah 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 blah. But it's in the contract. So now people that I respect and look up to, but not even from like like now on a personal level, because I've been fortunate enough to like be able to get to know some of these people, they now have to make decisions that are gonna affect their future because of a a situation that should not exist, a situation that should have never happened. Uh, <laughs> the fact that a billionaire needs a cut of Cesaro's Twitch bits yeah, <laughs> just doesn't fucking make any sense. No. It does not make any sense. So unfortunately, the only solution is get out of your contract and do it anyway. Stay employed and stop doing it. Or whatever the third avenue that like <laughs> that page and some other people are going down, which I fully support, which I 100% support. Um, it's going to be interesting if she can sort of spearhead this. Uh, she 100% will. Yeah. She, she is going to be. It is going to take uh, I would everybody. say, I would say, as, yeah, I would say aside, aside from Austin, because Austin has been, well, Xavier Woods has been like a very, like at the forefront of the fight for this. Um, she, they have two de very different approaches to it though, because I'm, I'm sure you, you've seen him speak and you see the way he carries himself and the way that he would have a conversation. Um, so obviously they, like they would be more open to have a conversation with him than like with what she's doing. Even though again, what she's doing is not wrong at all. She has every right to keep doing that. Um, but the way that, the, like, I love the way that she's like, no, fuck them. Like, like, fuck them. Like, they shouldn't get away with it. Like, I love that. And I wish, I wish more people would do that. Mm -hmm. Because, like, there might be backlash, but then there's going to be backlash to the backlash. Yeah. If, if you, if you get fired for speaking your, your mind, like, that's a lawsuit. Like, you can't get fired for the things that you say. Unless, of course, you say something blatantly racist yeah. or, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. Um, so just the fact that this continues and, and, and like I know it, it probably sounds like I'm angrier about it than I should be because it doesn't affect me personally. But like I said, like it, it, it affects people that I consider to be friends of mine. So it's like it, no matter what the situation, I, you don't want to see anybody that you care about have to like worry about the thing that like things that they're doing for work, things that they enjoy, things that they're, they're passionate about. Now they got to figure out like people are, we're building these communities on Twitch and so like, like again, I, like I, I shouldn't, I'm saying more things than I should, but like, at, like Adam Cole, like Adam Cole is, the way that I hear that man talk about his Twitch community and the conversations that we've had about like how much he, he loves doing that. And as soon as he's done wrestling, that's his, that's his thing, that's it. Uh, it's just like, it's so cool to hear these people who I have looked up to and respected before, now they're on the same page as me. Now they like the same shit I do. They do the same, like, we all have this common ground now and that's so, that's so cool to see. And now if for it to be just taken away in the way that it's taken away is, is, is bullshit. It's the biggest hunk of bullshit. And I hope that they're able to find a way to, to break through it. Yeah. Cause the, uh, the, the apparent reasons, because allegedly, just according to the news, which is always correct, of course, WWE are going to launch their own Twitch channel later this year and they don't want anything to get in the way and that got me thinking like surely if you've got 20 however many there are the big the big superstars who do Twitch surely if you've got 20 or 30 people established and with massive followings it can only benefit the thing they're affiliated to would you not think and the nope. WWE Twitch channel when it when it does launch it's going to get enough because it's WWE so it's the it's the it's the franchise it's the brand mm -hmm. it's going to carry enough steam with that sure. by itself not to sure. affect yeah. Would you have to, yeah. Pe people are people are gonna know, though, that what they're getting is not as authentic as what they were getting, and I think that's gonna that's gonna turn a lot of people off because they see twitch.tv slash Austin Creed, twitch.tv slash uh, Soraya, like these are these are the people now. Yeah. Uh, and now you do it under WWE, and now you're streaming as Xavier Woods, or you're streaming as Paige, or you're streaming as whatever, and it's can't say this, can't say that, don't do that. Don't, it's just like. Why? Like you're not paying them enough to 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 do that. And not only that, 
you want to use their Twitch money against their downside on their actual contract. What the f well, that, like, that, that's that, Chris. That's because they're not touring at the minute and they're not on the road. Therefore, the costs are down. I saw that quote. I saw, I saw. I saw that quote from somebody. Um, I think it was a PW Insider who reported that they spoke to a source within WWE, and that was the reason for this sort of like taking or banning of the Twitch streams that are happening at the minute. And of course, you're thinking straight away, what happens when they do go back on the road and the costs do go back up? Do they get the Twitch channels back? I doubt it. They won't. They won't. No. Like it just comes down to the fact that they he just. They don't get it. They don't get it. And it might it might come to a point where NXT people can stream and main roster people can't because there's two different people in charge. And one might have a point of view about it that is more based in reality because he's closer to the age of the people that are trying to do this. Yeah. And there's the other one who's not. So that's gonna be interesting if that happens because like, oh, okay, so like how many people are gonna be like, oh, well, send me back down to NXT then, if I can just go do whatever I want and make the same amount of money and like and do whatever. Uh, so I, I feel like it's gonna like create a division that probably shouldn't be there right now. Um, and and it's just it's just bad for for everybody, it's bad for everybody. I'm gonna throw this at you because you've got an informed opinion on this subject. Because mm. me being a complete outsider to the Twitch world and all that, I was thinking, fair enough on WWE for saying don't use your licensed like. Austin Creed calling himself Xavier Woods. Sure. Is, is that right on their part or is that wrong? No, ab absolutely. If you if you're going if I'm going saying I'm WWE's Xavier Woods and WWE, and here's like here's unicorns and it's like oh like it's not like yeah, like you're using that IP. But that's where it stops. Yeah, that's exactly where it stops. So when you when you then turn that off and you're home and you're in your like second office that you have with your little gaming setup and you turn a webcam on and you want to stream to some people. That's not, that doesn't have shit to do with your other thing. You know, if people come over because they have seen you there, okay. That's literally what happens everywhere. You discover something, someone from somewhere, and then you follow them places. It doesn't matter like where you, should I be paying Odyssey still? You know what I mean? Like, like I you know what I mean? think you should, yeah. <laughs> like, should I be paying like uh, the Odyssey management? So like, that we are not, it's different. It's, it's two completely different things. So. Until they separate that, it's it's more of the same, unfortunately. Um, so that the, the whole Twitch thing is a, a massive issue all by itself. But mm -hmm. the hell, I'll never forget. Dave Meltzer appeared on this this nonsense a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and he dropped the bombshell that people who work in the office at Stanford get health care, health insurance, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it, but the wrestlers don't. Mm -hmm. And that is the most backwards thing i've ever Makes heard in my absolutely life absolutely <laughs> no sense it's like it, you literally don't understand basic employee needs not even, and these are not regular employees they're not like scooping ice cream and sir like you you are breaking your effing bodies Paige for this company broke her neck twice and that was Le that legitimately was literally yeah. like not like not like oh figuratively broken like no you broke your bones your body is in shambles now um but you don't want to give me healthcare, and you want to take away my like just ability to do, to do anything outside of this, uh, and it sucks because I know a lot of people feel stuck, and like, I, and I know I'm just like a, an outside wrestling fan with with a YouTube channel, but like, I, I wish there was something I could do, because um, I know because being on this side of it, it's like you know that this is wrong, like, yeah. and, and I can say that as much as I want, but what what's that going to change? Uh, so I just I don't know. I just wish there was like something I could do. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's down Andrew Yang, isn't it? I think he's the one that's been sort of Yeah, he might he might have yeah. to swoop in and save the day. And <laughs> and you know, now with uh you know, I don't know what day this is going up, but now with you know certain results, that's more likely to happen probably now than it than it might have been. Um so so we'll see. Yep, we'll have to wait and see. Is there we'll anything see. else you want to touch on before we move on? That's a massive point you're saying. No, that I'm out. gonna let that one <laughs> I'm gonna just <laughs> let that one die the death that it needs to die and <laughs> move it right along. So I guess we're going to end the video on a happier note, maybe, judging by what uh, we're Well, I mean, anything's probably happier than that. Uh, <laughs> so, the, the, I mean, this is something that always gives me a chuckle, and it's it's so cringe-inducing, and, and it's just... But it puts a smile on my face, so I can't even say that, like... I do want it to go to hell, but, like, I want to watch it on the way down and, like, just <laughs> see it to the last second. Cutting promos on wrestlers on social media. Ooh, interesting when but when you're not even a wrestler 
Ah, is what I'm, right. Is what I, mean. <laughs> I thought you were meeting Becky Le- Becky Lynch last year and stuff like yes. that. No. So so I have so like I have a podcast with you know X amount of people watching. Oh, I bet Stone Cold Steve Austin's drunk ass wouldn't find a way to pick. Like, no, that's not the way to get him on your podcast. Oh, I bet. I bet the Messiah wouldn't be able to like, no, like you, I read these things and it's funny because I actually, I send them to my friends and we send them back and forth to each other. Like I'll screenshot it and be like, Johnny, look at this. Um, and it's just like, what? Who, who, who told you this was a good idea? Who told you this was a good idea? Because like, if you click on their profile, there'll be someone who like might look like they're actually trying to build something. You know what I mean? But put yourself in their shoes for a second. You want to be like chilling at your house, like Seth, like chilling on his couch next to Beck. And someone, oh, you piece of sh. Come on my podcast <laughs> and prove me wrong. Oh, you're a coward. You won't do it. Oh, babe, block me. He's a coward. And now they're like, and then they post like, oh, I got blocked by this person. They wear like a badge of honor. I, yeah, I don't get that one. Don't get that one at all. You Look. upset someone so they've blocked you. Now you're proud. I don't get that one. <laughs> And it's like, oh, this uh, this person's so mad. It's like, no, like they just don't want to see your shit anymore. They just don't want to see your shit anymore. So stop saying shit. Um, and it's like, like I said, more of a comedic thing. It's not a, it's not like a huge, it's not like a huge issue like our previous one. Um, but it's something I get so much joy out of seeing it. And like I said, as much as I wanted to go to hell, I'm, I'm almost sad to see it go. But I'll be glad to see it go because like I follow a decent amount of wrestlers. And like yeah. sometimes you just see like you like look at a reply or something you're just like oh my god like why like who who put that in your brain sir who put that in your brain take it out so is it is this people who maybe just like stick a camera in front of their face and then put a little video on twitter at the wrestler is this uh, what oh, we're speaking about here that's who yeah, yeah i have never seen this before in my life you need to send me a few of these because it sounds like right up my alley <laughs> my favorite though is the one where so the so like they'll have their phone but they won't record like this they'll like have it Put on the floor, like pointed at the ceiling, <laughs> so you like can't see their face. So it's just like a shadow of like their head. And oh, it's... Oh, I'm gonna beat your ass, uh, Lars Sullivan. I'm coming. To, I'm the. I'm Dominic the Destructinator. And it's like this. It's like no, you're not. You're Brian in your mom's living room. Like just stop. Just quit it. Just please stop. And it's just. I'm sorry. I'm probably got a little more aggressive than I need to. But that's the. Do I have any more notes? Oh no, that's all my notes. That's all my notes. That's all the notes gone. That's crazy. So I, was, I was getting worried at the start of that thing because as part of my video series here, I often cut a, cut a promo or two on a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, no, it's 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 but I, re- the, I, I I get the the irony of me stood there. I get it. It's it's done with very much tongue in cheek. I fully right. understand where exactly. you're coming from here. Exactly. The people who are taking it seriously, like they think they're a wrestler, and then they're going after the wrestler just because they are a wrestler. And exactly. They, think they can take them on in the rest. I know what right. you're talking about here. Yeah, like um, the tongue in cheek, like this, like I love that, shit. like the the sarcastic ass, like the, like I love that dumb, shit. like that's that's right <laughs> on my alley. But it's just like people that are like, the really you think that Brock Lesnar <laughs> come to your house because yeah. you called him a coward on social media, and then you tweet him day after day, you coming to what? You coming to what? You coming to what? I don't think he's coming, sir. No, it'd be funny if he did though. Coming. Just throw him in the be next. Hilarious! Film. <laughs> it'd be amazing. <laughs> I need uh, to, I need see. to get myself on Twitter more often and see this happening in the flesh. Because oh I've yeah! Never, oh, you know what? I'm gonna send you some. I'm gonna start sending you some. God, I can't wait. I can't wait. It sounds fantastic. I'm adding you to my to my screenshot list. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a long list? <laughs> uh, longer than you think, honestly. <laughs> but no. Start retweeting a few. See if it makes some things happen. Get some. Oh, absolutely. I, I might. We'll see. Like I don't. I don't like want people to like go like make fun of them or anything. And so like I don't want to. But it's just like that's why I like said it. Like this is kind of chuckle inducing. Yeah. But um. But no, I will say I will certainly send a few your way for sure. So is it is it just that or is there more different sort of tactics to get involved with the the wrestling so the, the wrestlers sorry is there it, um, we've, got, we've got the Twitter video sort of nailed down yeah. there is there any more tactics that you see being used by these people out there? Um, it's mostly it's mostly that uh, something something that bothers me too and you know it can kind of go either way but like I see a lot of people saying like hey you like you owe me something because I supported you so like hey I have a GoFundMe now. And oh. I bought your shirt once. Can you pay for half of it? Type of thing. And it's like it's like I get it. like some sometimes people just go through shit and you need to reach out and you feel desperate. Like I I I get it. Uh, but like but the ones that uh, that attack it with like a sense of you, you owe me this, or like 
and I feel like that happens a lot in 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 the wrestling niche niche whatever like there's this sense of like I support you so you owe me something mm -hmm. and it's kind of like that's not really anywhere else like you see uh, fans of musicians being like hey like I, I bought your album now come to my house and like pay from pay my bills and like that's it just doesn't it doesn't really happen as much I don't think outside of the outside of the wrestling world um but that's more of like a that's just people kind of being versus yeah. this kind of people being funny so I prefer people being funny yeah I can't <laughs> wait to see them I can't wait to see them there they go they're going straight down to hell Chris, oh, I'd like to thank you very much for coming on this has been a blast. oh dude thank you for inviting me man this is great Anything you like to plug just before you bugger off and enjoy your day? Uh, <laughs> I don't know where, I don't know where that came from. That was I'm, feeling, I, I'm feeling good today, man. Um, <laughs> I, if you guys want to come over, youtube.com slash dankops. You know, I do, I don't do as much wrestling stuff as I used to, unfortunately, uh, but we still throw in, you know, wrestling stuff every now and then. Um, so feel free to follow me also at the Chris Danker is my Instagram and Twitter and all the other shit. Uh, so yeah, you are more than welcome to hop on the train. And the new Odyssey coming and the new summer, Odyssey coming summer 2021. 2024. <laughs> 2024. Oh, You're optimistic. Oh, I'm, oh, okay. All right. This one's going to take some time. I was ready to drop it. We got to we gotta move. We got to put time on it. All right. Things Lovely. move quickly. <laughs> Hey, I can't learn. I can't learn dances that quick, to be honest with you. Especially oh, that. Sure, one. I'll never, I'll never get over that. That move with a guy running across your backs—it was sensational. You think you? Do you want to do the running, or do you want to be on the ground? I don't think that's a wise idea for anybody involved. Um, I don't need to say why. I'm sure you can see why. But that's it for this <laughs> no, thrilling installment of Straight to Hell. Chris, thank you so much. It's been fantastic, and we'll see you, you next man. time on Straight Absolutely. to Hell. Wait for the camera, Chris. See ya. Bye.